Hello there folks, this is Dan Bell with Internet, and today I'm going to focus on configuring the timesheets for Project Online. And I'm looking for a specific configuration. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about timesheets and tasks, uh, but in this particular instance, I'm going to configure timesheets so it's basically my one-stop shop to both operational tasks, meaning keep the lights on tasks, as well as my project tasks. Okay, so we'll be able to use that. And also, I'm going to want to be able to enter the hours per day worked on tasks, all right? So let's get started. The first thing I wanted to do is create a, a test project from which to run through this demo. I created the test project, and um, before I went too far, I wanted to show folks this. First of all, I was gonna build a team here, and I navigate to Control-T, and um, look for my record. My record's not here, so why, why is that? I'll have to ask myself, right? Well, if I go to server settings and the training environment hit that I'm using, then manage users. And here I can find my user record. Right there I am. If I click on this, the one thing we have to pay attention to if you're new to Project Online, this is something that you'll realize. User can be assigned as a resource. Unless this checkbox is, ch is checked, the user cannot be assigned as a resource on projects and therefore will not show up when you try to build the team. All right. So it's saving the info. Now if I go back to Project Pro and do Control-T to build team, I will hopefully see my record, and I do. Click Add. Now my rec my name should be here. So I'm going to assign using the resource assignments dialog box. Highlight those three, click Assign. Assigns me to those three. Highlight, click Assign. Brings me to those three. And now uh, it looks like we have a good time frame here. It's going to cover all of this week and out the next few weeks, so we're fine. Let's go ahead and info, publish. And this will go ahead and take care of publishing the assignments. If you ever notice, you can look at the lower right in Project Pro to see the status of whatever current action it is you're taking. In this case, I'm publishing, right? So you don't have to wait. You can exit out of the project, which I'm gonna do. And we'll go ahead and say, check it in. And now we'll go back to my project line environment. Now, if you recall, there's a tasks link and a timesheet link. What's the difference? Well, your task links is going to show only tasks related to projects that you happen to be currently working on. So what do you mean by that, Dan? Well, it actually means that, um, let's say you had administrative tasks that you need to log time to, for instance, uh, training or vacation or team meetings or things of that nature that don't apply to a specific project. Um, those, those you cannot enter time in in this particular view. The only things that will show up here are tasks that are the result of you being assigned to projects, right? And by default, there will be a specific grouping here, right? So it'll, it'll group your tasks by what's currently in progress and you can define the periods, whether it's two or more. And then the near future, I'll look out into the future to understand what you should be concerned about then. And then we'll have the grid over here and notice it, it's a tracking hours per day, right? So I could use this view to enter my time. Um, you know, ideally, um, most customers are going to want to have it so that they have a single view to utilize, meaning I don't want to have to enter time here and then go to timesheet for my operational activities, okay? Now, let's go ahead and do it so we have just one stop shop here. Right now, however, when I click on timesheets, uh, you can see that it's not functioning because I need to create time periods. Therefore, let's go ahead and start doing some configuration here, time reporting periods. And uh, what we're going to do is we'll create the number of periods. So let me specify some data here. We will go ahead and select, and I'm going to select there. It's going to start on Sunday. Um, standard period, seven days. Do I want to, so that's basically the, the sequence number. It's going to start at one because there's no current timesheets there. You know, um, if you wanted to put some kind of prefix, right? And I'm just going to do this so you can see what it looks like. But it's just going to prefix the time periods with a T. If I was creating for the from the beginning of the year, um, I could put FY22, FY23, whatever really makes more sense to me. But with the settings specified, create 52 time periods, that'll take me to next year. Click Create Bulk. And this should create my timesheets. And remember I said the T dash, that's going to be my right prefix there. You can see all the timesheets here, 731 through 86. So if that if that looks good, I'm gonna click OK. And uh, that'll save those settings. Now I can go click on timesheet and there should be something a little different here. And we're making some progress. 
okay? So basically it looks like I have a task here for a project and I have some administrative time as well. If I go to options here, I can actually remove the planned work so it'll make it a little tighter of a grid over here. And uh, maybe I don't want to comment on submit, okay? So we're, we're, it looks like we're making some progress here. Now let's go check out some of the settings just to make sure this is gonna function okay. All right, so we'll stop with timesheet settings and defaults here, and we'll go through these settings uh, quick enough so that you'll understand them. So the timesheet will use standard overtime and non-billable time tracking. And yeah, I'm just gonna keep this, um, you know, I don't want team members to be able to enter overtime as well as non-billable time in here as well. By default, timesheets will be created using current task assignments. All that really means is if there are tasks in your projects that are supposed to be occurring during the period of that particular timesheet you bring up, we want to pull them in there. Uh, default time tracking units are days. We want the units to be entered by the team members in hours. And that's the, the standard day is eight hours. And then we say the standard worksheet was 40. Here you can specify the max number of hours that can be entered on any timesheet. These are just the defaults. I you know, very rarely change these. So I'm just gonna leave those alone. Timesheet policies, there's several here. Do you wanna allow future time reporting? So when would you use this? Well, consider that people take vacations. Do you want them to be able to forward, you know, scroll forward a few months on their timesheet and enter that in there? Yeah, it might be a good idea because then you'll be able to get the calendar exceptions and it will reflect properly when you go ahead and determine your timelines and so forth. Uh, personal tasks is something okay. It, they don't apply to projects. It's just for your team member. Maybe they want to track time that they're spending on other things. That's fine. I'm not a fan of top level reporting. That just means that a team member could add time to a project at summary tasks. And um, at that summary task level, I have a project. That's that's not something I recommend. So I definitely shut that off. And then do we want to make it so that the task status manager has to approve items? And we're going to say yes, enabled. I'm not going to specify any auditing here. I'm not going to have any fixed approval routing. But what I do want is this. Um, this is called single entry mode. And what this does is this allows you to use your timesheet to submit both operational time as well as submit project related time to the PMs for approval. That's the last setting there. We'll click save. Okay, and that was timesheet. Let's look at the task settings and display. And there are just a few here we want to be covered with as well. Uh, so you can see by it has hours per day per period because that's what we selected on the prior. Um, this right here, the reporting display, report resources should work, report their hours worked every day. We want that. We don't want it so you just enter a, a figure for a week. That doesn't give us the, um, the level of tracking that we desire as a project manager. These next settings, or this next one in particular is extremely important. Only allow task updates via tasks and timesheets. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if I have a task in my project and me as the project manager, and it has a resource assigned and, and I go ahead and I try to change the percent complete, the tool won't allow me, project will not allow me to update that because that will be updating actual work. And this setting says that actual work can only be updated via either the tasks here or the timesheet here. So this is actually a really helpful setting because you can really run into mayhem if you allow team members to enter time via timesheets and update it as well as allow the PM to make changes to percent complete. The proper way to deal with certain things in your project is rather than change the percent complete to specify something's 100% done, is uh, let's say somebody worked eight hours on a 16 hour task, but they're done. Well, what the PM should do in that case is update remaining work to zero. All right. Um, import all timesheet uh, classifications. Yeah, we could go ahead and, and specify that if we wanted to and then allow users to define custom periods for their tasks. And we're really not a fan of that one. So I'm probably not gonna select that one here. We'll deselect that. And I think for the most part, um, we have everything set that we need at this point in time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save here. And that'll save my settings. And then I'm gonna go ahead back to my project and I'm gonna republish it. And that was my timesheet demo and this is just so that if there you know some of the settings required this item to be republished you don't want to go ahead and make that happen the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as another project name and we're going to call this you know 
production deployment. Quick save. And the only reason I'm doing this is so I can have more than one project show up on my timesheet. Click File Publish. And we can see the change down here, publish 42%. Let's go ahead and close out, put the information check back in. All right, now I can go ahead and take a look at, okay, now I can go ahead and take a look at my project again. So what's the task? Well, the task will be a little bit different because now I have the two projects, right? So naturally there's a little bit more, okay? Project name, production deployment, design, project name, timesheet demo. That's for the current period. Then the next two periods, you can see here's my production deployment, all those. Time to demo there. And then we have some in the distant future as well. All right. So again, I could enter time submitted here. However, the goal in this particular demonstration was to make it so that my timesheet would be the one-stop shop to project related hours as well as operational activities. And there we go. And now if you look, you'll see project, project, and then both the design tasks are doing these projects at this point in time. And then I also have those administrative tasks here. Uh, typically what I do is I like to group this information by project name and that way it kind of gives me a little clearer perspective as to what's going on here. So now we can see there's administrative work, there's the design tasks here, any comments. If I were to scroll over a little bit more I can see that 0% uh, were complete, that's because there's 16 hours scheduled and I've not entered any actuals. So if I were to enter eight there and so and again it says scheduled work is 16 if i enter eight hours this will this will change to excuse me percent work change will change to um 50 percent let me just do a save there and okay and let's scroll over and like i said we did eight of 16 now the actual work is bumped up to eight percent work complete 50 I do another eight here and then I'm going to do eight on that one. We're going to see some other changes and again, we're just saving at this point. So we did 16 of 16, hundred percent complete. And then remember this one, the same task, right? I just copied the project, submitted eight hours, actual work, 50% complete done. Now what I want to do is I want to submit these actuals to the project manager for approval. I can go ahead and send and then send progress. This will send just the project related tasks in here. If I wanted to submit the entire timesheet as well as the operational activities, meaning these up here, right? I would select the first option, turn in final timesheet. And typically that would be something I do at the end of the week. However, let's go ahead and submit these and you should see the status change and it did to awaiting approval. I'm the project manager here. Therefore, if I go to approvals and I would have probably received a email notification as well if I specified that I want to get notifications. There's the, the name of the tasks here, are the projects that those are in. And again, you could, as a project manager, maybe have a lot of updates coming in from team members. Well, you know what? I'd like to accept updates by project. So you certainly could group by project if you really wanted to. Um, you can see all levels as well. That'll expand it by default. And I can see, remember, we had the one that was 16. We entered eight and eight. In this case, I submitted eight hours. I just put eight hours on the 17th after that. If I'm liking what I'm seeing, I can select both of those, click accept, and there's an opportunity to submit a comment. And then you can see there are no more approvals waiting. So what happens at this point? Well, I would have received a notification as a project manager that a team member submitted actuals. I can go back in here, go into my timesheet demo. And since I accepted them, right, that means that the actuals are going to be accepted into the project. And you can see there's there's progress going on in there, right? So if I wanted to insert my actual work column, I can see that there's eight on that one there, and that was the project I submitted eight on, right? So there's the amount of progress. So that, that's basically the result of accepting the actuals that the team member submitted. The other project, if you recall, we put 16 hours on that one. And that was the production deployment. Uh, we'll open that project up. Now you can see in the Gantt, the bar, the progress is all the way through. And we can go ahead and insert actual work. There should be 16, which there are 16, right? Let's insert the remaining work. And there it is. 
it's going to be zero on that one because we entered 16 of 16 hours, right? So things are looking good. I'm done with the project. File, info, publish. Go back to the other one. File, info, publish. Close them out. I guess I'll check it back in. File, close, close it out. And back here and back to my timesheet. And there you go. Okay. Hopefully you folks learned something from this. I enjoyed showing it to you. If you have any questions after, comments, suggestions for other videos, don't hesitate to reach out. Love to hear from you. Thank you and have a wonderful afternoon.